So the Opal Tower engineer has responded to the final report. Let's have a look. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of Heiser Says. The final report for Opal Tower was released a few days ago and I'm still preparing a video going through the entire report. But I thought I would share the engineer's press release responding to the report now that we've gone through the architect's response a few days ago. And I'll add that as a title card to this video. I'll also add a title card to the, or a YouTube card, to the interim report if you're interested in going through that. So WSP, they were the engineers for the projects, and this is the report, well, the news release from their website. WSP is approved for construction design meets national construction code. Okay, so this is their approved drawings. They're the ones that have been stamped by the certifier or been approved by the certifier. WSP welcomes the release of the government's final report into the Opal Tower investigation. And this was released on Friday the 22nd of Feb 2019. So WSP's design consists of approved for construction drawings for the vertical structural elements of the building. The investigation has focused on the final as-constructed, as-built structure, says Guy Templeton, President and Chief Executive Officer of WSP in Australia and New Zealand. The report concludes that the specific localized damage of uh, sorry, localized areas of damage did not meet code as constructed. We confirm that our approved for construction design meets the National Construction Clo Code, including the areas of damage which were not built as originally designed by WSP. So let's just take take a step back and focus on that. The, they WSP prepared a design which met the code and national construction code requirements. But the as-constructed design, what was built, final outcome, wasn't what they designed. Now, you have to understand that the structural engineer isn't on site every day. They're not observing it every day. And they shouldn't have to. The builder should be able to, as a builder, as a licensed builder, master builder, should be able to interpret the design documents to accurately construct what was designed. So it looks like they haven't done it. So the final report notes several factors which are considered to have contributed to the cause of damage, including the as-constructed hub panel assembly, changes made after the original WSP approved for construction design, exacerbated by construction and material issues. I cannot tell you how many times I've encountered changes in a project after you've designed it. The problem is, all, is even more so when you have a design and construct procurement method where they're building while you're designing. But this looks like they've designed it compliant and maybe, I don't know, maybe someone thought, oh, they could make it a bit easier. You know, oh, yeah, we'll make the, the panels a little bit thicker. And you may think, oh, why would you make it thicker? Because it allows them, it's easier to vibrate the concrete as it's going in there to get more cover and get more spread. But it's easier to build, but it makes it heavier on the hob and it wasn't designed for that. We did not under-design the hob panel assembly, says Mr. Templeton. Put simply, it was not built as originally designed and changes made by others during construction have resulted in under-design as the report states. In other words, under strength. This report recognizes problems in construction and material deficiencies. So that that's interesting. So we'll have to see. It, I, I really wonder if they're going to dig further into this project and what's going to happen. If there'll be a court case coming out of it from the owners of the building, from the body corporate of the building, to see it, what, if this change happened, how it was approved. You know? Did the project manager approve it? Did the builder just do it themselves? Did a subby just do it and sneak it in? It'll be interesting to see. Let me know in the comments what you think is most likely, and we'll find out eventually. Supporting residents. WSP remains committed to helping people get back into their homes safely and as soon as possible into a fully restored building. We sincerely appreciate how difficult this situation has been for residents, and we are doing everything in our power to minimize ongoing impact says Mr. Templeton. I bet he is, but they really don't have much they can do because, you know, if they've done the design competently, it's not really, 
it's not really uh, up to them, is it? WSP has completed its design of remedial works and will continue to support the design and construction contractor, there we go, and other stakeholders during implementation as required. Okay, so here we go. It, it has been procured as design and construct, judging by this. And I cannot say I am surprised at all that that was the procurement method because it just has, it removes the traditional policeman of the industry. It means the certifier is working for the builder. It means the architect is working for the builder. It means the engineer is working for the builder. You know, and it is it is tough when someone, you've got three or four jobs on with someone and you got to say, no, sorry, you can't do it. No. And they'll just, they'll scream at you and fire you. That can happen. You know, and, and uh, you know, someone's breaking the law and the, the uh, bodies that have the responsibility for and the authority that we've invested in them to uh, enforce these regulations and requirements and rules that they make you all abide by don't do anything. So just look at the Shergold Weir report. I'll link to that as well as a card. If anyone's brave enough to go through the whole thing or at least watch the executive summary, you'll see some of the issues in the industry. An hour after the issue was reported on Christmas Eve, WSP mobilized a team of experts from around the country, New Zealand and United Kingdom to ensure public safety was maintained, identifying the root causes and support the builder in rectifying the problems. I can just imagine how stressful that would be for their team. Mr. Templeton explains, our people have been working extremely hard to scrutinize the problems and provide the support necessary to de develop effective remedial works. I wonder if they're getting paid for that, to be honest. I wonder if they are. I'd be shocked if they are. <laughs> really? I would be shocked if they are. They've collaborated closely with the government's appointed engineers, Professors Hoffman, Carter and Foster, the building, the builders engineers, Rinkovic partners, and the residential residents appointed engineers, Cardner. We take our obligations very seriously. We've been there every step of the way throughout the process, and we will see this through to the very end. Our people are actively engaged in the overall solution and providing input, advocating for industry changes. We agree in principle with recommendation for industry reform and welcome an opportunity to make a contribution, says Mr. Templeton. For example, introducing mandatory structural inspections in high-rise buildings at hold points during the construction process. You know, that seems like a very sensible and low cost, when you look at the overall construction of a building, low cost uh, implementation. Yeah. But that, that's the problem when you have design construct, they're squeezing the price, you've got builders, they're squeezing the price, you've got everyone squeezing the price that they're not allowing for these inspections. This will facilitate verification of construction in accordance with engineers approved for construction design. It will introduce additional checks and balances which provide a high level of assurance that approved for construction design is what is constructed. Exactly. That's the biggest problem. I, I feel quite sorry for WSP, to be honest, because their brand is going to take a lot of damage for it, even though you can see here, if everything they're saying here is correct, it's unreasonable to blame them for changes that were made beyond their control. It's that simple. New South Wales is in a position to lead the way in national reform. Well, I wouldn't say lead the way. I'd say catch up, to be frank. They need to catch up to some of the processes that are already in place in other states. But okay, put a positive spin on it. I, I respect that. Good persuasion there. There is a high degree of complexity surrounding any large-scale construction project due to the numerous parties involved in the project and their contractual roles. Definitely is. For Opal Tower, developer Ecove entered into a design and construct contract with Icon the Builder, who in turn engaged WSP, Wood and Grieve Engineers, the hydraulics, uh, Traino Group, the concrete contractor, McKenzie Consulting Group, the certifier, Evolution Precast Solutions, and APS Floor Slab Engineers, among others. Sterling Project Solutions acted as Superintendent of Works for ECO, the project manager. Okay, so that's interesting. Okay, that is very interesting because we I haven't heard any, any discussions in public about Sterling's role. Okay, because they were the party between the builder and 
well, no, they were the party between the um, the superintendent. So they were between Ecove and the builder. Now, if the builder wanted to do any changes from the the approved design, it, it, it the problem is it all comes down to how much of this design. See, this this is the fundamental issue, and I'm just going to rant here a little bit. The fundamental issue is when you're going to design and construct, Sterling, let's just say they handed over a, a concept design, a developed design, which had some very preliminary structural thinking in it, perhaps. Okay, and that's what they signed the builder up on to deliver. And then the builder had freedom to finish off the design and to make changes. Now, if they engaged WSP, and WSP did a certain particular design, okay, and that was approved, and then Icon made changes to that design, and Sterling was inspecting the work, how would Sterling know exactly what WSP provided? WSP can't really communicate with these guys. They have to communicate through the builder. So it's it's more complicated than you'd realize, and it can be a real frustration for you as a professional because you can't go around the hierarchy. So yeah, so no, this will, I I really hope that we dig more into this because traditionally architects were acting as project managers, and some of them were terrible, uh, but good project managers should you know, be on top of it and, and have quality processes in place to mitigate this type of risk for their client, okay? So Sterling should have had processes in place to ensure that Icon wouldn't be getting away with these type of things or these mistakes wouldn't happen or have evidence against it. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. We will see what happens. I'm going to, I'm gonna, uh, you know, see what their statement is to it. I'll look at them a bit later. So back to the report, restoring confidence. Phase one and phase two of the remediation works, which included prop, propping safety measures and repairs to isolated areas are now complete. In co consultation with relevant stakeholders, WSP has completed the approved for construction design for the final phase that focuses on wall strengthening and argumentation works. This will act as a load transfer mechanism between the existing precast walls and the in-situ concrete columns. The design is currently with the qualified independent structural engineers, Cardner. Once all remediation is complete, Opal Tower will be restored to a high structural standard, says Mr. Templeton. The numerous assessments undertaken to date indicate that no st stone has been left unturned in investigating, analyzing, and rectifying the issues. Our aim is to restore the confidence of the residents and the general public in this building. To stay abreast with our latest news and publications, they want you to go to their LinkedIn. So, here we go. Now we have the perspective of WSP from this report. And it is quite interesting. I'm glad that I can finally confirm that it was procured as Design and Construct. And I may do some videos explaining that a bit more, the Design and Construct process to people, if you're interested, if you're not familiar with how that's procured, because it really creates the potential for conflict of interest and it removes the, the independence of the traditional policemen of the industry. Guys, thank you all very much for joining me for this episode. Thank you to my new subscribers too that have subscribed in the last few days. You'll get a variety of different topics covered on my channel, that's for sure. Please like, share, and subscribe. Ding the bell to see my daily updates, and I will talk to you all again tomorrow. Have a nice day. Bye for now.